On this week's KSP News Show, new parts for 1.1 64-bit being reintroduced, KSP on Xbox One, but no Gas Planet 3 for the foreseeable future. What the hell, squad, you goddamn liars? I was promised Gas Planet 3 and now I'm not going to get it for almost like ever. Whoa, whoa, dude, seriously, oh, chill out. So, so, I'll, I'll shut up. Yeah, you better okay, had. Sorry. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jim Lee Kerman! Good morning, evening and afternoon my fellow Kerbanauts, my name is Jin Lee Kerman, welcome back to this week's KSB News Show. I just want to start off with a little bit of an apology if this video does sound a little bit poppier than usual, like my peas start going a lot and stuff like that. It's because my microphone's currently in a new position, I now have a boom stand for it, and I'm still trying to figure out the correct distance for the actual microphone and stuff like that to actually be from my face in order to actually, uh, actually sound good. I have got a pop filter on the way, but it's not going to be for another week or so before I actually get that, so bear with me for the time being. But for now, let's get on with the absolutely amazing news that we have. We, we, KSP News at the moment is like a bus. Like, you, you wait, like, weeks and nothing happens and then suddenly like millions of different things come along at once and as you can probably tell I am extremely excited for what's coming down the pipeline so yeah let's get straight on with that as I'm sure you're all pretty excited at this point because I'm just like hype so if you're not already aware Harv from HOC gaming is doing his annual K Kerbal polar expedition mission uh, this is a uh, charity stream over the course of five days where they attempt to, where him and a group of youtubers uh, attempt to get to the North Pole uh, in this year it's from the South Pole to the North Pole of Juna whereas in previous years it has been getting to the North Pole of Kerbin and all the while they drive a buggy to the North Pole of Juno or Kerbin, all the while raising money for a very, very good cause, which is Charity Water. As of this day, as of this video coming out, uh, it is currently the last day, um, so if you haven't already, go and uh, go and check it out. They are driving from, I think, 5 till 9 p.m. GMT, so if you want to go and uh, and check it out, I recommend uh, doing so, especially if you haven't seen it. It is a very good cause. But um, on the Friday uh, drive, which was the day three of the actual drive itself, um, they had Kerbal Space Program developers Ted and um, and Casper on, and um, they they made it a goal so that whenever um, when they eventually reached the initial donation goal of ten thousand um, dollars, they would reveal some more information with regards to 1.1. Now we already knew a little bit of these. Um, the, the, we already knew a couple of these things were coming just prior to the actual um, the actual stream. KSP was first of all announced for Xbox One. Let's start off with that. I think that is a very good thing to start off with so KSP announced a trailer just before the stream actually started for KSP um, 1.1 I believe it was a day or so after uh, they put it out on their YouTube channel this does now mean that KSP is now coming to both consoles both the PS4 and the Xbox one again we have no release date for them yet we have no idea um, how they're going to play out and I'm interested to see how this plays out. Again, I'm in, in, I'm excited to see. Like I remember, I remember when the PS4 version was announced. I was skeptical to begin with, um, but I, I still I still remain that I still remain skeptical um, as to how KSP is actually going to work on consoles. But then again, I do like to keep an open mind with regards to how it's actually going to play out because no one knows, no one knows until um, until you actually see gameplay or try it for yourself. And so I'm just going to play you the trailer now. Um, feel free to um, switch off and just watch it. It's only a couple of seconds long, but it's it's pretty cool, and uh, I hope you do enjoy. So I'll just play that for you now. Okay, so as you can see, it isn't really much of a trailer. It doesn't show much, um, much in the way of game. It doesn't show any in the way of gameplay. It's just literally an announcement trailer for Xbox One. It's similar to the one they, the announcement sort of screenshot they did with the PS4. Um, 
like I say, I don't think we're going to see many, much gameplay for this for the foreseeable future anyway, at least until round about sort of Christmas time. Max Maps has been stating in the dev notes in the recent weeks that while the PS4 version is now running, it's nowhere near in a playable state yet. So I wouldn't expect to see any gameplay from the PS4 or the Xbox One versions of KSP for at least a couple of months. Um, but until then, I'm just excited to see um, how they actually play out on both consoles now. I'm kind of glad that they're actually that KSP is going to both consoles rather than just to the one now. I think that makes it all a lot more diverse, and it means that the, pre the player base of KSP can uh, can broaden even more. And like I said in my uh, my PS4 video, a space is for everyone at the end of the day. And uh, Kerbal Space Program being on multi-platform now, being a multi-platform game, does sort of mean it does mean now that more people are going to have access to Kerbal space program and hopefully get inspired to become engineers and spacemen and all those good sorts of things that we all love in the KSP community and also that we'll just see more incredible craft um, that are actually going to be built and stuff like that and um, the more creativity and the more content that's made for KSP the better in my eyes I, that's personally what I think uh, the more the merrier is uh, a, yeah, a, a saying that I definitely like to, uh, to bring forward with that because sometimes I feel like the KSP community because KSP is such a niche, a niche game kind of like offset from the rest of everyone else. Don't know, that might just be my opinion, but I feel that it's kind of like away from everyone else in the KSP community, and some people do like that, but um, I think bringing more people into the mix is definitely going to uh, boost KSP's popularity, and um, I just generally think it's a good thing for the game overall. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this. Uh, do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think it's a good thing? Uh, I want to know your, your opinions in the comments down below. I've got a lot more things that I'm going I'm to need your opinions on in the comments down below, so I can, I can guess that this video is going to have a very, very full comments section. So uh, let's get on to the next bit of news, which is uh, one I hinted at on Friday, or, uh, on my last video on Friday, I believe, um, and that is 64-bit getting reintroduced into KSP. So Max Maps was kind of mucking around on Twitter the other day and he was teasing a couple of the features uh, that are going to be upcoming in 1.1 and he says, um, just got out of a big meeting regarding the Unity upgrade. Considering the size we're calling 1.1 now and it ain't fair. And then just after that he put, we got like 64 reasons to be excited for KSP. Now another one of the KSP developers called Ted Everett uh, then tweeted back at Max Maps saying, now let's not tease the masses too much, which pretty much confirms the fact that 64-bit um, is definitely going to be a thing in 1.1 now, for the Windows version anyway. This was also later confirmed on the KPE stream when Ted did explicitly state that 64-bit will be added back into, uh, into 1.1 uh, when it eventually drops. Now this is a very, very good thing and I cannot wait for this to happen because you guys you guys who have watched my ex Operation Exploration series, you know that I've got a lot of mods running on that and my PC, it, though it's, it's alright, it's a uh, build from 2013, it's starting to show its age just a little bit now, especially when I'm running a lot of mods in the 32-bit version of, of KSP. And so with Unity 5, obviously it's upgraded to a 64-bit editor, which means the game can now be upgraded for Windows uh, to 64-bit. Um, this means that um, it will now take a, take full use of your computer's RAM, or like it will allocate more RAM um, to actually actually running the game. Which means that um, there will be more space, so you can run more mods, and the game will hopefully run smoother in general uh, when the, you have like more textures and stuff like that added into the game. And trust me, if there's one thing that KSB needs, it's a performance increase. And thankfully, 1.1 definitely does seem like it's going to uh, be focusing a lot on performance and uh, and tweaking. For in the back, in the background, anyway, there are a lot of extra features which I'll get to in a second. Um, but in the background, in terms of like the the background of different of uh, of the update, it does seem like they're focusing a lot on performance enhancement and stuff like that, making sure the game runs smoothly, that all the lines of code code are neat and they're not like all over the place like they have been. Like they've been saying, the UI has been completely overhauled for Unity Five. It's been made a lot more efficient because it's just one first party. Um, one first party in-engine uh, development tool they're using rather than the several they've been using beforehand of the third party tools. And this is just a general good thing all round I reckon. And uh, I hope that, fingers crossed, the 64-bit does become the norm. 
Ted did say on the stream as well that they are going to be keeping the 32-bit um, the 32-bit version of KSP optional for people running older machines to maybe let their kids play on them or something like that. Um, if they, their kids play KSP on an older 32-bit machine, they're going to keep that uh, available so that people can still uh, can still play uh, KSP even though there is a newer 64-bit version available. But like I say, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Personally, I think this is just an all good change there isn't really much of a negative at the moment unless it releases in a buggy state like uh, like 64-bit did initially for KSP but somehow now that unity is actually you're actually able to recreate the bugs that were created uh, through through 64 bits I think that this is definitely a good change and I think it should be a relatively smooth release when it actually drops so this next little bit of news is um, regarding some of the new parts that we're going to be getting in 1.1 and uh, I'm pretty confident there are going to be a lot of new parts in 1.1. Uh, we already know that there are several with regards to the new relay system that's coming in. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago on the last KSP news show that was uh, that was broadcast. Um, but now we've got some of the more uh, some of the plain parts that we seem we seem to get plain parts every uh, every new update. But this time, rather than focusing on Mark 2 and Mark 3, um, the developers at uh, this time anyway have chosen to reveal some of the Mark 1 overhaul parts. And I, I think these look pretty cool. So first off, let's take a look at the new jet engines. And I've just told a lie, these are actually, uh, these are 0.625 meter jet engines. They're called Juno, and these have a little intake on them as well. You can see on the screenshot that I'll put on the screen now. These screenshots were revealed on the KPE yesterday. Um, as of recording this, it was yesterday, it would be two days ago when this video actually releases. But um, you can see here that they're a nice little engine. But if I zoom in on the actual thrust stats at the moment, these could be subject to change, but at the moment it looks like they provide about 40 thrust each, something like that, which is kind of, it's pretty punchy if I'm honest for a small engine like that. And I love the modeling on them. Holy crap, does Porkjet do a good job of modeling parts. And you'll see in a minute um, with the new Mark 1, like 1.25 meter parts, just what a good job he's done on those because they look really nice indeed. But I can see these engines most likely being used on a private, like a sort of like a private jet sort of um, sort of setting, like let's say you have a really important Kerbal like Jebediah and he's at the secret airbase and you need him urgently over at the KSC to fly in and fly a mission to Jewel or something like that. You, he can hop in his private jet with his twin Juno engines down by, uh, down by the tail and he can fly over. And uh, speaking of a private jet, that is what um, the new 1.25 meter parts remind me of as well. You can see here with the screenshot I'm going to put on the screen now, you can see the new Mark 1 cockpit and crew cabin. Now, the Mark 1 cockpit is uh, it's been designed to replace the one in the in the in the game at the moment, you know, the pointy one that's sort of like incorporated into a nose cone, you know, the one, the original Mark 1 cockpit before the inline came along and uh, and spoiled its fun of being the only cockpit for 1.25 meter parts. Um in a way, I'm kind of sad to see it go because it is a cool cockpit and it has gone through several major revisions over the past, like, few years that Kerbal Space Program has been around. But if I'm honest, the cockpit didn't really fit with the, the overall theme of the game. So this retexturing and uh, remodeling, I think, is definitely needed. And I definitely think it looks very, very cool. We've also, of course, as I said, got the crew cabin, which is just badass. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Just look at it. It's beautiful, and I can just see some amazing, like, uh, like private jets being made, as I said, um, out of these parts and stuff like that. Unfortunately, at the moment, with 1.1, they do not plan to add IVAs for these two parts, so you won't be able to see the interior view, but they are planned to come in a future update, which is um, a little bit disappointing, I have to admit, but... At the end of the day, 1.1 is going to be a massive update, and so little emissions like this we can live without, especially for the time being. And just just the exterior of the parts, really, for me, just is brilliant. I can't I can't wait. I cannot wait to use these parts because I've wanted to make it like a nice private jet for so long in vanilla KSP, but I just haven't been able to for whatever reason. Uh, with the Mark II parts, they just don't seem to cut it, and the Mark III parts are just too large. So having these ones uh, is definitely a benefit, in my in my opinion. What I'm curious to know, though, is about the crew cabin. Is does it hold fuel? 
and how many crew can it actually hold? My guess is it probably holds a little bit of fuel, sort of like the nacelle parts that you get, like sort of 40 units of fuel, and um, maybe holds like two Kerbals, maybe something around that, those sorts of numbers. That's just a complete estimate in my in my eyes at the moment, and it could be completely wrong. Like I say, all the stats that are here on this video are probably subject to change in the coming days or so, or coming weeks, um, on the lead up to 1.1's release as squad balance and QA test all the different parts and all that sort of thing. But I am really looking forward to these parts and as always as I said let me know in the comments down below what you think about it and um, that's pretty much it for the positive news we've just got one little bit of slightly negative news to bring to you but uh, I'm sure I'll just brush this over before I finish the show. Now Ted unfortunately did state on the KS the KPE3 stream that uh, squad currently have no plans to add a gas giant 3 into uh, into Kerbal Space Program Vanilla. He said while new planets and stuff like that are something that they are definitely looking to add in the future, Gas Planet 3 is probably not one of them, at least for the foreseeable future. He puts this down to the, the way the game has changed over the course of development and um, just the fact that it would look a little bit out of place now in, uh, in the eyes of the developers. Um, although new planets and stuff are planned for future updates, just not 1.1. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed about this, and I was initially upon hearing it because I want, ga I'd love Gas Planet 3. I really would. Like a, 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 ma a more massive version of Jewel that's further out, it's got like rings and more moons and all that sort of stuff. That would be great, but if you think about it, it doesn't really add a whole lot more gameplay into uh, into Kerbal Space Program. Like these these relays, they add a whole like, extra like, sort of like layer of gameplay to uh, enhance the player experience. If you went to this this uh, this new planet, you'd go there, you'd be like, oh cool, this is a new planet, this is awesome, let's, let's go and land on all its moons, let's send a massive mission there, let's colonize it and stuff like that. After that, you sort of, you have, like, go send millions of missions to it, because obviously it's a new planet, it's a shiny new toy, you want to play with it, that's just human nature. You get there, and after like a month or so of actually playing KSP, you're like, yeah, actually, I'm bored of this this new planet now, I'm going to go back to my normal, uh, my normal destinations, Juna and stuff like that, I'm going to start a new save, do career mode, what, do whatever. And you may revisit it a couple again in the future and stuff like that, but it won't be this spectacle that uh, that you initially thought it would be. That's just my opinion anyway. Um, like I say, new planets and stuff are being added into the game, just not for 1.1. They are being planned for future updates, which is awesome. I do like to see new planets and all that sort of stuff, but um, Gas Planet 3, unfortunately for the foreseeable future, just won't be added. Unfortunately, and I know it's sad, and I'm certainly sad about that, but um, at the end of the day, we are getting a crap ton more features that are just uh, are equally as awesome, if not more awesome, I think, in my opinion. And so, yes, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode of the KSP news show. As I said, through all the stories in this episode, this has been a really long episode, by the way, like, we're approaching 20 minutes already. This is insane. But um, let me know in the comments down below what you think of all these different all these different uh, revelations. Are you sad that Gas Planet 3 is not coming? Are you happy? What do you make of the new parts? KSP coming to Xbox One and 64-bit being reintroduced. We have had loads of information regarding 1.1 and the future of KSP in general uh, come at us this week. And it's all been thanks to KPE3. And if you haven't seen this, this video is going to go up probably a little bit um, before, if not during the last day of the KPE stream. I thoroughly recommend that you go and watch Halves Twitch stream if you can and give whatever you can um, to uh, to uh, his cause. It is a very good cause and um, even just by turning off ad block if you have it and watching Halves stream, the ad revenue generated from Twitch will go directly to the uh, do to the people affected and bring clean water to uh, where places where it not it isn't necessarily clean and stuff like that. So um, like I say, a very very good cause, and I do thoroughly recommend that you go give your uh, whatever you can to KPE3. Like I say, amazing cause. But that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode, guys. Remember, like I say, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. This is Ginny Kerman signing off, and as always, stay classy.